All right, guys, so this is going to be my full interview with Red Mage for episode two of Stranglethorn Vice. For those people out there who want an even deeper insight into the true life of a World of Warcraft gold seller, I'm not going to lie, there are issues with the audio. I've tried to fix it up the best I can, but don't be surprised when you can hear some window sounds and sniffing from time to time. And I'm probably just going to put a compilation of my old videos in the background because I know people are just going to tab out and listen to this while working anyway. Before we get into the interview guys, I'm going to sound like for your mum for a minute. As gamers, we spend a lot of time staring at screens and it's definitely not good for your eyes. What's even worse is when you have a desk lamp also blazing blue light into your eye. Now, Benk have sent me a really cool gadget called a monitor light, which sticks on your monitor and directs the light downward, so it's not directly going into your eye. I've been using it for months now, and it really makes a difference, because if you combine this with flux on your monitor, your eyes are just strained so much less, and you really feel it. It's very easy to use with this touchscreen bar to adjust the power of the light and the colour. If you want to learn more about it, I'll leave all the links in the description. Alright guys, so today, we're doing a full interview with a World of Warcraft gold seller. This is going to be a follow-up episode to my episode two of Stranglethorn Vice. It's a little bit of a bonus video so people can get a little bit more information. So anyway, let's start with an introduction. I'm joined by Red Mage. Maybe we can start with a little introduction, um, you know, your bit of an overview of your gold selling history, you know, how long you have while we're doing it and uh, in what, you know, what expansion. Um. If I was to say what expansion I started in, uh, it was roughly the beginning of the Burning Crusade. I ran into a situation where uh, a, a cat I needed, Junior, needed some significant medical attention. He had a paw infection, liver infection, less than fantastic kidneys. The lady behind us died and left him behind, and he had all kinds of problems. Um, I kind of panicked looking for money that I did just didn't have. And I'm like, wait, I have World of Warcraft gold. And I just, that's where I started. I just sold the gold to cover a medical expense at first. And after that, I realized that, wait, why in the hell am I working at, you know, this random factory job making six fifty five an hour when I could be making $20 an hour. But yeah, that's basically how I got my start is, is, is to cover a significant medical expense for an animal. Right, so started to cover off, started by, you know, trying to cover certain medical fees. So at what point did, did it become like, you know, a full-time hustle, <clears throat> like a main hustle rather than a side job? Um, Roughly after the first payment uh, deposited, my brother looked at it and he's like, how did you ask pull, you know, 420 something dollars in less than a week? And I'm like, oh, I just... uh." farmed a whole bunch of gold on my palate. And he's like, why are you not doing that as a job instead of working at that awful factory? And I sat there for a good 20 minutes thinking to myself, and I'm like, yeah, he's, he's actually absolutely completely right. Why am I working at this disgusting, you know, shit factory instead of, um, you know, farming gold. And so I started out basically small testing. Uh, for example, I targeted, people who are generally going after a high-end market. Uh, before Blizzard destroyed Twinking, there was a dun the old Razor Fen Down dungeon. I can run the entire thing in about six minutes on the pallet and kill off all the enemies and walk out with between five and uh, five and eight radiant shards. And on the hour basis at the beginning of Burning Crusade, that came out to a little over twenty-two dollars an hour. Wow. Just from Radiant shards and a few other things from RFK. Well, that's where I started out. It was a nice, simple side farm, but then I started moving on to other things like uh, created a druid, started doing speed skinning runs, uh, hit up Dire Maw East. Uh, Dire Maw North was actually worthless at one point. It was actually really good at one point, but then Blizzard decided to slap the ban hammer on it. Um, maybe not the ban hammer, like the nerf hammer. Right. Um, crap, hit the wrong key. Oops, sorry about that. No, it's fine. Um, but I moved on to, uh, Dire Mall East speed runs, which were, uh, you grab all the fell cloth you can, you grab all the herbs in, or you can 
and you kill Aslan the wild, wild Shaper. You run behind him, grab his two rich thoriums, which almost always dro- dropped an arcane tr- uh, arcane uh, crystal. Ran out, reset, ran back in, and that took like six to eight minutes, uh, depending. And I wasn't even the fastest class doing it. Paladin was not a quick class to be doing this. Is why I eventually uh, switched switched over to Cocaine Druid. But uh, yeah, that's where I got the start in Burning Crusade, anyways. So you started out just doing it on your own characters, naturally playing the game yourself. I had a working theory at the time that um, Blizzard typically would be looking for people that were were botting, doing doing certain things. Now, I never botted the entire time I played. Uh, I was one of those people that was raised that uh, everything you earn, you earn yourself. You don't cheat a system. You don't cheat at all. You earn it yourself. Um, the way Blizzard's algorithm would look for people that were cheating were, you know, a level one trading 300,000 gold to somebody, for example. Uh, that's that's a ginormous red flag. But if you're playing the game regular, uh, you're doing raiding, you have a communication list, you look more legitimate on the outside than a level one that never communicates with everybody, with anybody, doesn't have a guild. And just you know, trades two hundred thousand gold in Goldshire to some random that they never spoke spoken to. All right. So you you were selling like selling gold like privately to people rather than going through a third party website. Um. At first, I went through a company called MMO Pin. Uh, MMO Pin, I think it was called. Um. It was a small company that was centralized here in the u.s it was run by uh, a grandmother and her grandson that lived in montana um i was selling them gold for about 22 dollars per thousand and they were selling it for about 25 to 40 depending on the market and i'll go screw off tsm <laughs> oh. we got updates no whatever um and then I moved on to IGE, IGXE, some smaller companies. I got involved in some gold farming chats. Uh, MMO Pin actually had a contributor system set up to where uh, the more gold you sold them, the more points you gained. Uh, and those points could be cashed out for free copies of the game. So in, in some cases, it covered if I did get banned, at least have another copy. But the more important part of that was the contributor forum uh, helped people find different kinds of uh, gold farms to help out with their current situation, uh, chats, group farms. Um, I did farm with a lot of people from, not, not Taiwan, South v- Vietnam, I believe it was. Uh, barely spoke any licks of English, but uh, those guys are, were just fantastic. Uh, I learned about a whole bunch of extra farms from them. Uh, more than just testing myself but yeah and so you've always done farming just you actually playing the game never doing any bots i have never used bots i know how to use them i know friends and compatriots that do use them uh i know how to spot them but no i've never used a bot and you you were selling farmer gold from tbc days did you say was it until wallows of drano days I stopped gold farming around the end of Warlords of Draenor, although I did get a few uh, small personal requests from people I've known and sold to in the past. Uh, I have a friend, uh, his nickname is uh, Tank of Legion, and he got a hold of me during BFA. He's like, hey, you know, do you still sell gold? And I'm like, yeah, sure. What do you need? And he's like, I have like two and a half million to get my long boy but I need the other two and a half million and work is really slamming me right now. Could you help me out? I'll pay you. So I'm like, all right, I'll go ahead and farm up the gold. So I started farming up the gold, you know, passively over the next three months. And then I, I said, well, I have all the gold here. Like, can I get access to your account real quick? So I can go ahead and deposit your, uh, your personal guild bank. He's like, yeah, sure. So I log on to his account and find out he had nowhere near near two and a half million. He had two and a half million in gold value sitting in his bank. And we had a long discussion about the difference between gold value and actual liquid assets. Um, 
I told him there's not enough time for me to get the other two and a half million. So I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, you can cancel the order and I could just sell it to somebody else. And he's like, nah, bro, I, um, you know, I already ordered this gold ahead of time. It's my fault for not understanding the difference between gold value concept and actual liquid assets. So, you know, he paid the, whatever the price was then, I think it was only like $230. I mean, by BFA, gold had deflated so much in value that it was effectively the only way to make money off of it with, at any reasonable pace was buying. But yeah, he paid for his amount. We went our both separate ways. I still talked to the guy. He's a nice guy, but um, yeah. So like at, at, at its absolute peak, like how much gold on average were you making like per hour and per day? It depended on expansion. Uh, during Wrath of Lich King, I moved around 300,000 gold per month uh, at about between 20 and $23 per thousand. So about between, you know, I want to say between 2000 to $4,500 uh, per month, depending on when I moved it and who I moved it with. Uh, by the time Wrath of Lich King ended, it had deflated down to about $15 by the end of cataclysm it deflated to about uh seven or eight thousand uh, uh seven or eight dollars per thousand um pandaria uh, didn't move it that much because most people said screw pandaria and quit uh by the time water rolled around i was lucky to make a uh, dollar fifty eight an hour it had deflated to the point where i may as well work as a waitress somewhere i'll make more money All right and that's probably when people started to go crazy with bots, multiple accounts, stuff like that. It's interesting you say like you're making like four grand a month just on one account, one person farming. Uh, when we know bots? people are oh, making sorry. um you know, people we know now that people are doing like eighty accounts at once. <laughs> you know. Um botting really took off when there's a I'm not sure if you ever heard of Wow Glider. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I guess for people who don't know, Blizzard shot themselves in the foot. Uh, they managed to lose their case against WoW Glider, but they managed to keep the injunction on the sale of WoW Glider. Uh, the judge that was presiding over the case had obviously had stock in, in Blizzard, so it made no sense he even had the power to do that, but, you know, whatever. Um, the guy who owned WoW Glider... Uh, said, you know what, it'd be a shame if this source code got sold out, sold out to somebody, and it, that's exactly what happened. So now you have an incredibly effective and powerful bot uh, towards the end of Cataclysm that not only was undetectable because it ran below what the WoW Warden systems could detect it at, but uh, readily available and being distributed under different names under many different companies. In other words... Blizzard is its own super villain. They did almost all the damage themselves. Sorry, I'm after repeat that. So, so what 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 did they do to um what to make make glider possible then? Uh, uh, what now? I have to re I have to repeat that again. I think I missed it. Like, so how did how did they shoot themselves in the foot? Okay, so the judge presiding over the case put a injunction on the sale of Wow Glider. Um, with the company, uh, when the company was started out, it only had about 20,000 users of the actual program itself. Um, and by the time the court case had ended and the injunction started, they had over 100,000. So the company that made Wow Glider was like, oh, well, I, we don't have the, we can't sell that anymore. They put a permanent injunction on the sale of the product. So they're like, oh, well, you know, Blizzard already was, was suing us because they couldn't detect the bot. And that was the biggest thing that the Blizzard had a problem with is they couldn't detect the bot. Um, so what they did, the company that was selling Wow Glider, uh, they sold the source code off to a whole bunch of other smaller companies. Right. And they made their own version of WoW Glider. Uh, so now you, instead of having just one bot that's undetectable with a small user base, you have hundreds of bots that are undetectable with a large user base. So um, how do you go about, like, 
selling the gold without your personal account getting banned? Um, I believe it's a, the, the reason I didn't get banned is twofold. One, um, people who move a large amount of gold, uh, they don't typically move it in a way that would, uh, be considered stealthy. They're like, oh, hey, level one, uh, trade you in the middle of Goldshire at two in the afternoon. Here's 200,000. Uh, that's not an incredibly stealthy way to do it. Uh, a couple ways to do it, and you already mentioned this in your other video, was set up a banking system, put the exact amount that they bought from your character into the bank, and then they'll pick it out of the bank. You know, by you invite them into the guild, mm. they take it out. Uh, on an alt that didn't really matter if it was their main or their alt. They got their gold. You recorded the session to make sure, you know, there was no conflict of interest or they're not going to report me for stealing or something like that. Uh, another way you could do it was instead of trading them straight gold, you would trade them items. Uh, let's say somebody bought 10,000 gold, you trade them 10,000 gold in. Thorium ore, for example. And mind you, some people just did not like this way of doing it, but I mean, they would stare at you weird. But at the end of the day, they got theirs and they, we had a guarantee set up that, you know, if it didn't equal out, we'd come back and, and give them the rest manually. But there, there's a couple other ways. Um, but trading on your maximum level character is, it, it looks more legitimate. It's, it makes way more sense for a character that is you know, level 80 trading somebody 10K than somebody who's level one trading somebody 10K. That, that's, it's a, uh, a red flag. And did you never get banned from TBC until what? Like you didn't get your account banned at all? I still have my original account. <laughs> I, I was, yeah, I, I well, never got touched. I mean, how many years is that? Um, if, if each expansion is two I, years, I mean... Wow. I, I at this point I, I'm too old to, for, to to even remember how many years that was, but it's got to be at least over 15 years. At, at, unbannable. Now you talk about this um, warden system. So is that is that like the automatic system Blizzard has implemented <coughs> into the game to detect bots? Warden um, is a system that uh, it'll download. God damn it, go away, trade skill master. I'm about to close you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, it would uh, download on the fly, or in some cases, it would literally just be on your system, period. And it would check your processor log to see if you're running any programs that would match what they would be considered a bot. Um, and for the longest time, this worked relatively well. Uh, Warden in its first iteration was way more violent. Um, it would search your process logs. It would search your internet history. It would search your inputs. Um, they had to tone it back a lot because I believe uh, Blizzard actually got sued for how invasive the original Warden system was. Uh, they toned it down to just look at your processor log, uh, your, your Windows process log. Um, but a lot of after WoW Glider situation happened, almost all of those, um, <laughs> yeah, the, don't worry about that. that was my phone going off. Yeah, don't worry. Um, you can have a random Final Fantasy fanfare there. Um, the almost all of these uh, botting programs run underneath the operating system. Uh, some of them as far down as the rootkit level, and mm -hmm. Blizzard could not program uh, Warden to go down to that level because the pushback would be, um, let's just say, not fun, to say the least. So they're risking like legal issues making a better Warden system to detect bots. They can't do it server-side. Uh, they probably could do it server-side at this if point. If they had GMs. It, if they, yeah, they don't have GMs anymore. Yeah, so um, where the main problem lies. They can't rely on the warden system as downloading something to your World of Warcraft client and to your computer to see no. if you've got a bot running. It's, it's, they got to the point where they fired off probably about a thousand support staff 
and majority of those were either CSMs or GMs. And when you don't have active support running around your game saying, bad bot, the banned, or getting marked for banning in this case, um, you end up relying on your players. Uh, at first, uh, when, when I was actually gold selling, I would actually violently kill other bots. I did not absolutely care. Uh, I would, uh, in Wintergrasp, I would hire Horde to kill my own faction just to make sure I got all the titanium. And it ended up being a little war with a, a guild called Buggernaut. Um, okay. Yeah, it was, I, I was violently against botting in general because it did way more damage to the, to the economy than just regular farming did. How do you um, prevent the buyers from getting banned? Did the buyers ever get banned? Like, because it was bought loads of gold out of nowhere. I have... I've heard of buyers getting banned, but to the people I sold to, I've never heard of them getting banned. See, uh, the TOS is, explicitly states that, oh, well, you know, buying or selling gold will get you banned. But it was way easier to go after, say, the sellers than it was to go after the buyers. Uh, the buyers are typically people who are, would be considered in other games whales. Uh, the con I'm not sure if you know the concept of a whale. It's a person who has a lot of money, yeah, yeah. but not a lot of free time. They, they would buy items, they buy gold, uh, it, mostly free MMOs, they would do this. But in World of Warcraft, if they don't have the time, they'll go ahead and uh, buy, the, buy the gold. And Blizzard typically would leave them the hell alone because that's the kind of person they want to stay in their game. Uh, if they're buying a lot of gold, but we remove the gold, we remove the, the place they buy or the people they buy the gold from, and we offer them, you know, mounts and cosmetics, and they're going to spend a lot of money on that. And that's what Blizzard wants. They're moving away from, you know, being a respectable game company to like, hey, let's feed the whales. Did you ever have any encounters with game masters? Um, I've been suspended on more than one occasion for um, less than fantastic names. Um, I got suspended for a week for yelling gas them when we're doing winter grass battle. Uh, apparently people thought it was a um, Nazi reference and it wasn't. It just happened to be on those little uh, skull cars, fired gas canisters. It wasn't a Nazi reference, but hey, I got banned anyways, or suspended in this case. So you've never been banned and for gold selling? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> um, the closest I've ever came was there was a GM that was being a smart ass, occasionally turning invisible, following me around Wintergrass. Uh, and I stopped and I looked up into the air where I knew he just did, he reappeared and disappeared from. And I said, okay, come out, asshole. And he popped in. And I'm like, well, why are you following me? He's like, I, I suspect you of botting. And I'm like, can a bot do this? And I flew over and I saw an alliance. Uh, another alliance, uh, and I ordered uh, my uh, kill squad to kill him because he was competing with me. They killed him, and he's looking like, oh, you're not a bot. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. And then I killed one of the horde people I actually hired to prove it. But yeah, that guy, he followed me around for a little bit. He popped up one or two more times to make sure I wasn't botting. Like, I'm pretty sure he suspected that was gold, gold selling, but just didn't have enough evidence to really bring to bear against me. Uh, I actually kind of wish he was still around because having a GM be that active is incredibly rare. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, not. yeah. He 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 didn't bother me after about a, about a week. He'd pop in occasionally, like, "Hey, how you doing? You still botting?" And I look at him like, "I'm still not botting." <laughs> <laughs> and he, after about a week, he stopped. So yeah, it was it was it was amusing for about a week, if not terrifying. But you know, he 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 went off and banned somebody else, I guess. How do you think the removal of GDKPs would affect the amount of money a gold seller can make? Here's the thing. Uh, GD, GDKP, they can say, is removed all they want. Um, people still buy runs. Um, the, for example, when Blizzard did that sting operation on the Gallywix Consortium, uh, which was a whole bunch of... Um, they sell runs, GDKP, GDKP runs, things like that. Uh, the top people there were making, you know, four, five, six grand a month uh, easily. 
And when they went in and they destroyed their Discord community, that community was reset up within less than a week. Uh, you can keep throwing hammers at the problem, but if they're immune to getting banned because I mean, there's no setup cost for WoW, what's $15, and you get all the way up until the before the previous expansion, or the, before the new expansion, that's it. There's no real reason to even continue trying to ban them. Uh, it doesn't really affect the grand scheme of things because uh, while people buying runs and such is a significant portion of it, it's not as big as just your average buyer. Like, hey, I really want this item uh, uh, and I don't want to play, play ball with Blizzard's token system. So they'll go ahead and they'll buy the gold just flat. And they'll pick up the item. Um, GD, GDKP is never going to die. It's going to be around until the game eventually dies. Yeah, so that's a good point. It would, I mean, if you tried to ban it or make it against terms of service, it would be very difficult to police. Um, they already don't have the people to police things that go on on a day to day basis. Uh, I, I can I can go almost anywhere in the game, and within ten minutes, find somebody buying. It's not difficult. Uh, there was a one guy. Excuse me, cat. Uh, during uh, Wrath of the Lord, there's Cataclysm. Uh, he went by the nick nickname Little Tony. And he was a level 7 orc uh, that was teleport mining around um, zones in Cataclysm mining at level 7. Uh, he did not get banned using this teleport exploit until the end of Warlords of Draenor. <laughs> uh, he was in the, in the chat just showing like dude people are reporting me every day and I'm still not bad and I got kind of angry at him like hey I was mining that area and he's like well it sucks to be you I'm te teleporting faster than you and he had his little head popped out the ground you know mining and herbing so I, I decided to play a little prank on him and there was an herb item that you could use in uh, Cataclysm that turned you into an herb so I would turn myself into an herb and sit right next to a regular one, and he'd teleport as his little level seven and try to use herbalism and flag himself for PvP. And then I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't exactly too happy about that. He's like, hey, bro, we're on the same team. He's like, no, we're not on the same team. You work for a different company. You die. I mean, but yeah, um, that's an interesting idea. They should just add more stuff to the game where you can uh, grief the bosses. Just for, for plays to do. <laughs> yeah, it there used to be more than a couple ways to do it. Um, for example, if you would flag them for a duel, uh, the bot would absolutely have a seizure and just sit there and finally accept it. And then you just lure you. They would they would follow you around. Uh, these are some older bots that did this. They would follow you around. You would bring them to an area with a few mobs. Beat them in the duel and then let the mob come up and one shot them. I mean, that was one of the ways you could do it. You could turn yourself into herbs. There were certain toys that would flag. Uh, if you baited them into a duel and they were trying to not, you know, not accept, you could get on your your rot your two your two person rocket mount, and they would get on it, and then you would fly over, say, like a void or a very high cliff, and then drop them off and watch them fall to their death. Uh, I did that in Burning Crusade a couple times where I would bait a bot into clicking on my rocket, fly over the void, and then boot them off into the freaking void. And then on the way down, I'd be sent to yell something like, enjoy the run back, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so, last big question. Uh, that, this is more of my curiosity. I'm not sure um, many of people would be that bothered about this, but so what I'm curious about is how how do you set up this gold selling like enterprise as like a legitimate business, so that you're on the right side of the law in the real world? Um, put it this way: uh, let's say, for example, Blizzard called up the police station and said this person is selling gold. The police there would be like, "Well, what the fuck are we going to do about it?" <laughs> well, it's more like how, how do you how do you like obviously like um. You know, not get 
prosecuted by the tax man. That's what I mean. Like, how do you set it up? Like, oh, you know, do you um, set up as a sole trader or something like that? You don't really have to go that far. You can go ahead and uh, in the U.S. you can file as self-employed. Yeah. And all you have to do is just put your earnings on there and they take their taxes out. Um, you know, at, like just take their taxes out as regular towards the end of the year. Um, there were ways and their people have gotten in trouble for hiding their income this way. Um, but like gold selling companies, they're usually sent, not centralized in the U.S. They're centralized in southern Vietnam. Uh, there's some in they're, they're, uh, they're put in China, uh, uh, th- uh, Thailand, India, um, few other, if you can think about it, any area that has an extremely low income is ripe for exploitation for gold farms. Um, and those don't really have to worry about us law because the IRS has no authority in say Singapore or India or China in general. Uh, but if you're in the U.S. and you're gold farming here, yeah, they very much could say, uh, give me your house because you've been selling too much wild gold. <laughs> so do people like, like, do they ever pretend to create a company in India or are they genuinely actually in that country? Oh, uh, shell companies? Oh, absolutely. Um, MMO Pin got the, the first company I, I worked with. Uh, they got in trouble with both the IRS and the Federal Trade Commission for doing such a thing. They created a shell company in, uh, I believe it was South Vietnam, to offload most of their sales to. Uh, they got busted for it because they were operating out of, Man- uh, of Montana. And they had a situation where both the IRS got on their shit and then the Federal Trade Commission got a raid of their servers in the U.S. that were, you know, maintaining their website. And within like a week, despite the, you know, despite their backup servers, within a week, that company was entirely gone. Uh, the last I heard, the person who was operating that website did, did I think, about three years for tax evasion. I don't think the grandma did anything because she was like... 85 and they just didn't want to deal with their health problems but yeah uh, making a shell company was absolutely a way for some people to get around u.s law in general and were, were they just accepting other people's gold or were, were they also farming it farming it themselves with bots and stuff like that uh, a bit of both uh you could sell to them yourself um obviously i was selling to them that was one of the first companies i sold to but uh, they did have their own bot system as well. Um, typically, it was be on it would be on their forums where their bots were, um, you know, what not to farm, what times and days, because the bots will be there and competing with you, and they don't want their other individual contributors competing with them. Uh, typically, they didn't have that many bots running. I mean, we're talking like this is the early days of gold farming. So it's like fifteen bots tops. But they did have some bots, but a good, the good majority of their actual gold came from manual farmers like me at the time. And they're just like a middleman, essentially. A middleman, it, 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 yeah, I think a middleman would be a, a fair a determination of it. Although it was more of an involved minuteman because, again, they had their own uh, forum system, their own help system, a point system to get a game. I mean, I think I got a copy of Diablo 2 off their point system and then never used it again. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were a middleman for a good chunk of it. But at the same time, they also, also provided, uh, if you wanted to bot, they provided links to bots. They provided new farms. The forums in general were a very, very lucrative place to look for new farms. This is before uh, YouTube became the de facto search engine for what should I farm her um, but yeah, it was a generalized community that even though they were only a middleman, they put a lot of effort into making sure that all their inter- individual contributors were successful because their individual contributor success meant their success, if you get that idea. Yeah, what, what was the name of our website again? MMO 
Pin, M-M-O-P-I-N-N, I believe. Right. Right out there. Uh, they they went bust and went to prison for uh, for years. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they they went up belly up. Uh, gold companies in general, ones that deal with that, um, they they generally end up uh, either on in Blizzard's crosshairs or they end up going belly up. Uh, there are. Companies that have been around for a long time that sell don't really sell WoW Gold. Like WoW Gold's not the only thing I've attempted to sell. I, I've tried doing Ion, which was infested uh, by day one with a ridiculous amount of bots. I've tried Eve Online and found out that um, uh, having a entire fleet with four, like six accounts of heavy duty miners is a ginormous target, and I got my. Uh, my arse handed to me. Um, and I've tried a couple other games. Uh, I thought about doing it in Final Fantasy XI and then kind of gave up that idea because Square Enix is violent about how they go about against bots and gold sellers. But uh, yeah, a lot of gold companies in general just do not last a long time. So which one's probably the lasted the longest? If I would have to say, uh, the one that would la- has lasted the longest that I know of, I haven't checked on in a while, but uh, probably IGE or IGXE, uh, Player Auctions has been around for a long time as well, although that one is, uh, you can call their moderation and their um, control for scammers less than fantastic. But um, a lot of companies would occasionally just change their name as well. So sometimes you'd go to IGE and you're like, oh, well, they they changed their name to IGXE for some reason. And then you're like, oh, wait, that's not. I'm on the wrong freaking web page. And then you look for their web, other web page and you're like, well, they look the same. It's a clone site. Um, let me see. There was another company called Mogs. And the guy who was running that was running out of Illyria, Ohio. He was literally less than 20 minutes away from it. And um, his company uh, tried rebranding and um, didn't exactly go out too well. And they got, because he he had a a Moogle from Final Fantasy on his main page. So uh, he got hit with a copyright uh, cease and desist from Square Enix, of all people. (laughs) There were a lot of them also like hacking accounts and then like, vendoring everything that that account had and then trading the gold to their right. own account and then reselling it oh uh, uh, gold seal stealing oh absolutely uh companies uh would would definitely key log uh players um i even became a victim of it on more than one occasion i shared my account with my um less than mentally uh equipped brother and he on more than one occasion. <laughs> uh, okay, let me let me go ahead and redo that. My um, dense <laughs> brother. There we go. <laughs> um, he would download. He would download mods for you know the game, and he'd get them from you know less than, than reputable places, and get my account compromised. Um, I did, did have an authenticator at one point, but the authenticators may as well be worthless. They don't really protect your account as much as you would think that they do anymore. But for gold stealing, uh, absolutely. Uh, after a certain point, after like the gold started hitting down about the five dollar mark per thousand, uh, they a lot of companies started realizing it's much easier just to go fishing and see who mm-hmm. they can catch. And loot their account for everything they're worth than it was to, you know, just have some some regular dude working at a desk job farming gold all day. But gold stealing was absolutely a problem. Uh, it still is a problem to this day, although it, it, the botting is more of an issue than just flat theft now. Yeah, so like as the gold was dropping in value, they had to find new methods, essentially. <laughs> It's it, it follows a typical um, capitalism 
race to the bottom kind of situation. You know, something starts off novel and high priced and uh, then there's this race to the bottom to see who can provide said service or item for the cheapest cost. Uh, it's it's something that happens in a lot of industries. Uh, candy industries, for example, like uh, if you ever had those Troblerones or I believe that's what they're called. I, I'm bad with British candies, oh, for example. T- Toblerone. Yes, that. <laughs> um, like you noticed they started with how it had like like six or seven of those little chocolate spikes in it. And then they reduced it to like four, and but it's the same length, and you're like, wait, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Wa- wagon wheels used to be four times the size as well. If you ever have yeah. had them in the states, or a honey bun used to be, you know, three and a half ounces, and now it's like an ounce and a half. Um, but yeah, the, they would go in a race to the bottom to provide the the most gold or items or runs that they could for the cheapest price. And often uh, this, this kind of going to the bottom of the, of the barrel, or in this case, picking up the barrel and digging at the worms underneath it uh, caused a lot of, uh, of, of problems, uh, supply issues, uh, unable to, you know, get on the server to get you your gold or there's no gold on that server or they'd ask you to, in some rare cases, ask you, hey, could we sell it to you on a different server? But uh, it basically devolved into bots. And that's, like, I, I come back to that problem again, is that botting is the most significant uh, problem for the game in general. So, you know, when people are botting, uh, how long does it take before that account is banned? Typically between two and three months, Blizzard has always banned in a uh, band wave kind of uh, setup. And this is, well, back in the day, you'd have to buy the original game. You'd have to buy Burning Crusade, Wrath of the You'd have to buy all the expansions up to a certain point. It wasn't until like Cataclysm, Pandaria that they started including expansions with the initial price. But you had to buy the original game. So uh, what they do is they would ban in ban waves, usually right before that their quarter report is due. So all the bots that just got banned now bought a brand new, uh, bought a brand new account. So that looks really good on the uh, that quarter sales because suddenly they have you know a whole bunch of subscriptions suddenly gone, and then a whole bunch of sales right before the end of the quarter report. Um, they probably shouldn't do it this way because it, it it lets them get set up fairly quickly. The quickest way to deter somebody from gold selling or botting is straight up just ban them. They just don't don't sandbag, don't wait. The second your system picks them up botting, ban them. But they don't do that because Blizzard loves money. Right. I mean, they can make a little bit of money on the botted account, can't they, before it gets banned? Well, I mean, when you think about it, without the current bots that are in the system, uh, the WoW token would not be profitable. What Blizzard is effectively doing is uh, regular people can you know, spend their $20 and then they can try to sell their token. Well, when you think about it like that, the people who are you know, you know, uh, using the gold are buying it from the bots. Uh, the the bots, people who are, are botting will will typically just if they have to, they'll buy a token that way. Or uh, regular people will go and buy from the gold sellers and then go buy a token if they want to cover their account that way. Or effectively, Blizzard is setting a uh, by using the token, setting a price minimum. And all the bots have to do is be below that price minimum. But then people are like, oh, well, I'm not safe if I buy from, you know, X gold selling company. When in truth, you're pretty much safe 90% of the time. It's not really that big of a risk. Uh, But Blizzard is effectively using their token and keeping the algorithm how the token price is calculated as kind of a version of illegal price fixing. Uh, 
you if you were to do this, say, with cryptocurrency, uh, you would get the security exchange commissions on your rear end real quick. But I mean, that's going into that, that starts to get into a little bit into conspiracy theory kind of thing. And I want to avoid that. Yeah, it's kind of like stock manipulation, isn't it? Yeah. You know how these, uh, you know, when you, when you go and get a bot online, you, you normally have to pay for it and then you have to pay monthly for it. Like, do you know how these, like, what do these big gold farming companies do? Like, do they have their own bots set up or do they pay for these monthly subs for the other bots? It depends on the company. Uh, some of them uh, will, for example, they'll pick up, uh, let's say they'll pick up um, Gorgeous Jeans Massive Botting Program 3.0. Let's, let's use a ridiculous uh, example. They'll pick that up and they'll pay like their first two months. But during that first two months, they're having their own set of people reverse engineer it. And once they get to the point where they reverse engineer it, they'll use their own inner company, uh, in, inner group bot system. Um, for example, uh, when Wow Glider was still up, that one was really relatively buy it once and then, you know, occasionally buy uh, an upgrade package for or something like that. Uh, but typically, uh, botting programs nowadays will be like, oh, um, you get 400 cycles a month for $19.99. They're going to a subscription model because they're generally getting tired of people reverse engineering their their botting systems, and the companies will then use it as a as a, an internal system. Uh, for example, some of IGE's bots, um, that's an an, an an internal system. There's no, they don't sell that. Um, some very thrifty and smart people would absolutely look at how a, a botting system works. Like they'll pick one up on trial, they'll see how it works and then they'll just go ahead and they'll, they'll learn to code and write their own. So, um, yeah. There's not too many people who do that. It's but funny, it does funny you should say that because someone, after I made my initial video, someone did email me saying that they have reverse engineered the bot I used, Benetto. <laughs> uh, and they wanted to, uh, Tell me a bit more about how, how the bot works and everything, so that could be another follow-up episode <laughs> coming soon. Yeah, you might want to talk to that person more to me about the inner workings of a bot and you know, how it's reverse engineered. I do have, I wouldn't say coding background. The only actual code I ever did in my lifetime was assembly, and I was incredibly bad at it. So, yeah. Uh, if, if you want to do the inner workings of that kind of thing, you're going to have to get somebody with some actual uh, coding experience to, to learn how they reverse engineer those. Are you familiar with like the botting scene in RAF Classic at the minute? Like, any understanding about how people are botting on their, like what gold farms they're doing and how much money they're making? That's interesting you to ask because the only World of Warcraft I play right now is Wrath Classic. Um, yeah, uh, I see a couple bots probably every day at this point. Uh, there is a few of them flying around Wintergrass mining at any given time. Uh, on my server, Mankirk, there is a bot called Blueface Mommy. Um, yeah, it's a death knight, go figure. Um, and she's You'll, you'll see her 18 hours a day flying around mining in Wintergrass. Uh, there is the Frostflow Caverns, which are across from Camp Tunkalo or whatever in Storm Peaks. There's a little fire cave with um, wailing winds, which drop crystallized fire. You'll find that one's not as populated, but you'll find like two or three bots there at any given time. And uh, there's a person there named Isramexis that's always always freaking there at night um there is uh some uh, right outside that cave there's usually somebody bot skinning which is just a weird thing to do because skins don't sell for that much um it's typically a hunter with a nonsense name or a dk with a nonsense name uh like if you were looking for a bot on wrath classic in most cases it's going to be a death knight uh 
you could do a slash you to for death knights and i guarantee probably about half of that population is bots there's just no getting around it and blizzard doesn't do anything about it so a lot of them mainly doing instance farming aren't they because then they can have 40 <coughs> death knights from 40 different accounts doing one dungeon all at the same time they they can do the instance farming and that's an effective way to do it especially if you have you know a multi-bot setup uh but a lot of them will still be out in the open world uh mining herbing skinning um in places that were traditionally just for you know just regular players would find it just you know passively farm while they wait for you know could pick up by a group um the despite the fact that people say oh well you know they're they're in instances like no there's there's still quite a few of them uh there's another one and it's a bot druid that is always in shalazar basin you know from 1 a.m in the morning until 10 a.m in the morning flying around bot urbing using their flight form um you'll you'll find consistent bots in almost every farming area in the entire game no matter where you go if instances may be like the go-to for them, but they, they're still out in the open world and decent amount numbers cause issues. Yeah, like how many, you know, what's like the average of um, many like bots that people are running when they're trying to farm gold and make money from it, make a living of it? Like, you know, how many <laughs> bots are they actually using? If they were using a... Uh, a bot in the United States. Now, let's use that as like a baseline. Um, they would need to cover uh, their cycles. There's a lot of bots that handle multiple cycles, in this case, 400 cycles, um, for, for say, in a subscription time situation. Uh, you would have to cover uh, the electricity usage of your system. Uh, probably a small amount of that would go to maintenance of the system. And then you would have um, like general upkeep, uh, you know, cleaning, it, you know, paying for your subscription. So in general, you probably have to run uh, at a minimum between four and seven bots. And that would generate you around, I want to say around between 500 to $800 a month. So the ones that are, Doing this on a more professional level are definitely running probably like forty five of these, if not more. Yeah, uh, a regular person, uh, like like a regular Joe with just one computer, or you know, just one computer and just a potato sitting in the back room, um, is not going to make uh, a significant amount of money uh, buying. They absolutely can make you know decent side change, but we're we're not talking you know hundreds of thousands of gold a day you'd have to be running over 20 bots on the minimum to pull that kind of numbers yeah so like these days you need 20 bots you need all of that infrastructure going on but like back in the day you could just farm the gold on your on your own without even having a bot and make two to four grand a month well i mean warlords or drainer did most of the damage to to, to the economy I mean, when you can log in on an alt and walk away with five grand a day, uh, the first thing that's going to happen to your your gold is it's going to continually deflate in value. Uh, that's pretty much comes back to why I quit doing it professionally during World Wars of Draenor. A uh, dollar, like fifty something, a dollar fifty an hour, I can go outside and collect cans and make more money at that point. <laughs> so <laughs> it was not worth doing. But do people still do it on retail though these days? Uh, manual farming, um, probably a, like regular people, but not for selling it purposes. Like they'll they'll do their regular farming to pay for their token, but it, it takes, uh, I believe, using my associates or my friends in this case as a parameter. Uh, most players are probably going to struggle to break more than 10k an hour. Uh, you have people like on the internet, like student abaraz or whatever, saying, "Oh, you'll make 90k an hour," and then you go do the farm yourself. It's like, yeah, it's 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 4k an hour, and these 
clam pearls or whatever you're farming are going to take, you know, 97 years to actually sell in the auction house. But uh, the average person um, would only make about 10K an hour. So you're looking with the current token prices, 28 to 30 hours or probably 32 hours of farming to cover your token for the month. And at, when you look at it, that's basically a job. Mm. You know, uh, it's only like 32, it's 32 hours spread over a month. But it may as well be extra overtime on a job. Why bother going doing that when you can, you know, pay five dollars to uh, X gold farmer in whatever country, get your two hundred and eighty k or whatever, buy your token, be done for it for the month, and then you know use your regular money to you know, just buy whatever you want. It doesn't make sense for a lot of regular people because the gold is so deflated in value that it's much easier just to just buy off of the gold. Sellers. So that's, that's so people can buy gold off gold sellers and then buy game time with that gold and then effectively get World of Warcraft subscription for much cheaper. Oh yeah, they absolutely would. Um, How much cheaper, like half the price or like a quarter of the price? Um, between, I want to say between $8 and $11 would be, so they, they would pay the gold farmer or the gold seller in this case, uh, between eight and eleven dollars, instead of you know uh, farming up the gold. So eleven dollars is one hour in most in a lot of just regular nine to five jobs here, uh, unless you live in one of those states like Texas where it's you know minimum wage is seven fifty. Unfortunate for them, but uh, why spend thirty two hours when you can go ahead and spend you know one hour? Um, it should mute yeah, windows in sounds. general, the gold. <laughs> uh, what it should mute windows sounds. You freaking it's it's TSM going off like crazy. Um, but uh, like in general, it's actually cheaper to buy gold off of the sellers than buy your token than it is to actually farm it or actually buy the token. So, so people farming gold and retail are going to need a lot of bots to make it profitable. You can get around that. Um, I was, I farmed up recently two copies of um, Diablo 4. I got, um, I got one copy for myself and I got one copy for my wife. Uh, you can do it on retail, but it's going to take a while. It took me about two months to get up a little over 3 million gold to pick up both of them. Um, and it was a couple hours a day, but you have to think I've been doing this for over a decade and I already know what markets to hit. Typically you hit your materials market first and you, I don't do runs cause I just don't care for rating anymore. Uh, but you hit the material markets, but you also hit the transmog market because that's you'll make more off of that over a longer period of time. But if you if you're kind of the the person the JG Wetworth need cash now, you you, you hit the material markets harder than you hit the transmog. But so, uh, for so a normal person, uh, carry on. Sorry, for a normal person that has, let's say, they've only been paying the, playing the game. I don't know, six months to a year. Maybe they've only been here for two expansions. Uh, it is almost aggressively against them and how they're supposed to handle the situation. Yeah, the token is there, but they'll go online, they'll look at uh, you know gold guides on YouTube, and then they'll go and do it themselves, and then they realize, well, 90% of the value of this is transmog. I going to be dead in my grave before any of this crap sells <laughs> yeah I've seen so gold videos like that um, yeah it's like oh 90k an hour 500k an hour and then you go and do it and it's like it's all transmog and you made literally 1k an hour within everything else so, so uh, would you say that the player, uh, sorry would you say sure. that the um the wow token on retail has massively depreciated the value of gold to the point where it is much less profitable for gold sellers to exist on retail. 
I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it makes it harder on them. So uh, the main token armors, has helped with RMT. Uh, no, it's absolutely made it just worse. <laughs> it's made it worse, but it's made it worse. All all the token does is is set a price. It's, it sets a price cap that they have to go under. Uh, if you were to take out a calculator and you would take two hundred and seventy-seven thousand or twenty dollars US and divide it by two hundred and seventy-seven thousand gold, that would be that's that's what your gold gold seller has to beat. Uh, all they have to all, all the token did was uh, price fix the, the cost of gold. You don't have the wild you know two to four dollar swings anymore. You have maybe one to two cent swings, but you don't have this massive. Uh, variance in in the value of the gold anymore. And now it has deflated the gold over value, but that's more Blizzard's doing than the gold seller. Uh, Blizzard typically makes every expansion at this point where they make it give you the illusion that you're making a lot, but you're really not. Uh, the All the token has done has turned the game into a pay-to-win paradise. Uh, People will argue that, oh, well, Blizzard's technically not selling gold. Uh, they absolutely are. Uh, there's no way for us to, for a player or a person to track if they're putting tokens up there themselves. Uh, we don't know the algorithm it uses to calculate its price. Uh, we do not know uh, a lot of factors in, in how that is operating. Um, but all it does is just set a price cap. It doesn't really change the the ultimate outcome. People are still going to, and it, it sets up a situation where it encourages gold, gold buying. Uh, for example, uh, let's say your guild is doing horribly on like the last two losses of whatever raid is active. Uh, you really, really, really want that green and purple amount that shoots fire out of its ears. For example, just being silly about it. Um, you really want that amount. You know that 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 twenty dollars to Blizzard, you know you're buying progression, you're buying power, but you really want that amount. It doesn't seem that bad anymore. Or you could go to a gold seller, uh, you know, gold selling site, and buy it from them and, and give Blizzard the finger. But either way, you're still buying from one of the two. Uh, um, either way, it's a lose lose situation. So it really uh, just means that the gold sellers make less profit. But if they it, have to undercut the token, it makes gold cheaper. So that you know, an average player can get more for their money when it comes to buying gold. So it really doesn't really um, achieve anything for the players. It doesn't do anything. All, all it does is, is, is price cap the it price cap the gold. That's all it does. And uh, gold uh, bots, gold selling companies, etc., uh, absolutely can easily go below what Blizzard's asking. It would not be difficult. I could theoretically go below what Blizzard's asking. It wouldn't be difficult. It would suck because I really don't want to make ninety cents in an hour, like I'm, you know, some poor Chinese sweatshop guy. But you could theoretically do it. Uh, um, Blizzard does not actually care about their players. The people need to realize this. They don't care. Uh, if you died and died in a fire covered in chocolate, they would not care. <laughs> Uh, that's actually a really painful way to go because sugar hurts. What, um, what differences have you noticed with the wild token being added to Wrath Classic? Uh, on Wrath Classic, because there's less gold in the system, the token is worth far less. Uh, when it first came out, the token price jumped to about six and a half, seven k. Uh, but now it's like sitting at like forty two to forty five hundred people don't have to buy gold in Wrath Classic. You don't. Uh, well, I mean, I, people are spending a lot of money on GD, GDKPs. It, GD, if you, here's the thing. I, I'm very old school. If I catch you in a, in a GD, G, GDKP, I will harass you relentlessly for being a sellout. <laughs> uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't care about your feelings if I catch you you know, GGAGPP, instead of going through a regular Ray Guild, I'm going to look at you as less of a human being uh, in general. <laughs> uh, 
but you don't have to to, to buy a golden rath classic. Uh, I just I, I was I'm sitting in a in a fire cave with two other bots faffing about looking looking for a group on my shaman. And it's only, you know, 10 days into my subscription cycle and I'm already sitting on 9K. I, I don't have to really, wor really work for it. I'm not trying to gold farm. This is just doing regular stuff. And it, it's actually, uh, I, while there's a lot of bots and stuff, it, obviously in Wrath Classic, uh, the best way to combat that is, for a regular player is information. It's not difficult. Um, it'd be nice if Blizzard would step in and say, I don't know, permanently flag all bots currently botting for PvP for both factions. Because then you have a feeding frenzy of free honor on both sides. That would be a good solution, but you know they'll never do that. Uh, but no, you don't really need to, to, to gold farm on, on Wrath Classic. You could uh, fly around... Terracar forest mining and make 600 gold an hour. And it, it, it's, you know, 600 gold an hour is not a lot. Uh, but adjusted for inflation compared to retail, uh, 600 gold an hour, uh, because retail's gold is worth 60 times less than Wrath retail. So you're 600 times 60. Uh, that would be what we're looking at. You know, more than six thousand gold an hour. Obviously, let me go ahead and quick, quick math that. Your one hour farming in Wrath Classic is the equivalent of making thirty six thousand gold in retail. It's that much more valuable for your time. So while yeah, there's still obviously gold selling going on, Blizzard being Blizzard, um, you absolutely don't have to ever touch uh, the WoW token to get by. It, unlike in retail, where it absolutely feels like you have to. And what do you think Blizzard can actually do to fix a problem? Um, flagging all bots for PvP would be good. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, the best thing that could happen for Blizzard right now is to Bobby for Bobby Kotick to get hit by a truck. Um, <laughs> ho hopefully, he gets Isekai'd off to a dimension that he deserves. Um, Blizzard is at the point where they've let the problem fester for so long that coming up with a long-term permanent solution uh, is just not not going to come from them. Uh, the best way to combat, and this is is coming from a person who was a previously a filthy gold seller themselves. The best way to combat gold selling is information. Uh, if somebody in trade asks, you know, or, or helping, if somebody in trade asks for, oh, like 300 gold for uh, mount training and you're making, you know, 15K an hour, 300 gold is not even two minutes of your time. Go to the guy, hand it to him, be like, hey, I'll hand you this 300 gold if you follow me and I'll show you where you can make some gold. And a lot of people are absolutely willing to, to, to learn this thing themselves. You'll take them off to whatever area that you've been earning 300 gold an hour for and show them the ropes, hand them the 300 gold. They, they're happy for their time. Now they have an area to farm. Uh, if you want to combat gold farming in general, uh, players need to stop buying runs. They need to stop buying boosting. Uh, people who buy those things need to be called out and sh publicly shamed for, be for effectively cheating. Uh, uh, for example, I had a friend named Jason, and he offered me like $38, $40 to level the last 10 levels on his Wrath character way back in Wrath of Lich King. And um, I took this up, but his guildmates uh, recognized the difference in my demeanor immediately. Jason was the kind of person that would, whenever he's on, he'd hop on Discord. He'd be really a chatty in chat. I wasn't interested in his guild. I was never going to get in it, so I didn't care. My focus was not social, get it done, get it over with, give him his character back. Uh, and when he got his character back at max level, his guild absolutely reamed his ass for it. They were not happy about him buying services. They were absolutely shaming him. 
and it shamed them to the point where he had to jump ser servers. They were putting this crap in chat. Uh, I don't exactly think harassment is the best tool. It's, it is a tool, obviously. But the, going out there and being a good person and being helpful is um, a good way to stop people from just buying gold or buying power in general. Uh, it's Blizzard doesn't exactly foster that kind of atmosphere. They want to make that money. So they, they're going to exploit people's toxicity and their willingness to cheat in order to make a buck. And that's the only, it has to start with the players. And that's just, it's just not working. It would be interesting if, um, if there was some kind of like debuff. But yeah, I, I, I don't have enough information to really give a sound judgment on how it was set up in in, in classic when it first launched. Um, I mean, Twitch. I don't really, I, I tried doing Twitch and then I failed horribly at it. So not a Twitch. Uh, if you want, you can, I guess, message me on Twitter uh, at no Nocturnal Red Mage or uh, N O. Uh, yeah, N O C T U R N A L R M, Nocturnal Red Mage, uh, on Twitter. Um, I don't really. I have a YouTube channel that I haven't touched in like five years, so I'm not gonna mess with that. <laughs> uh, but no, okay, I just. Can I, message you for more questions then on, on your Twitter. Oh yeah, sure, by all means. Um, I just, I just don't have really any presence on social media, as as to say, compared to you know years and years ago. But yeah, you can go ahead and absolutely, absolutely message me there. I'll leave that link in the description. Uh, don't be harassment or anything like that. Oh no! They, it, please harass me. I would absolutely love uh, to call you. <laughs> I enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy arguments. Please harass me. I'm from the I beginning of the internet. I love that kind of crap. <laughs> All righty anyway. then. Well, uh, next. Yeah, thank you for having me. You have a great day, man. Uh, no worries.